Hello, person! Join me as we dive deep into understanding how the hell to create not sucky shadows. Here's what the shadows used to look like a couple weeks ago. They're really patchy and uh, messy looking and they only can run for a couple entities and there are lots of issues that make them look quite, uh, uh I kind of want to use the word ugly. Thus I began a quest for better looking shadows. Here's a little mock-up I made that might look better. Right, we've got a shadow coming off of the player, attached to his feet, that's perfect. And also, other entities in the scene can cast shadows. The old approach was a thing called ray casting. Um, basically, I would take a voxel from the a model and then cast a ray down to the floor or wherever it hit, and that was how the shadows were made before. And it created very patchy, bad looking things like this. Uh, the the good technique to use is something called dynamic shadows and I was completely daunted about creating dynamic shadows because I just didn't understand how they worked. But then it finally clicked for me how shadow maps work. Basically, you use a depth buffer once from the camera's perspective and then you create another depth buffer from the light's perspective. Comparing the two, you can create a shadow map which shows you exactly where all the shadows will lie in two-dimensional space. The reason it finally clicked for me is because I understand basically how projection works. You take a three-dimensional position, for example, we might have the, the three-dimensional position for the voxel that is this player's top of his mohawk. And you can project that into two and a half dimensional space and you get out a an X and Y coordinate for the actual two-dimensional space, but you also get a Z coordinate, which is the depth so you can project a 3D coordinate into a 2.5D coordinate, but you can also unproject. So you can take that 2.5D coordinate with its depth value, unproject it, and get back your three-dimensional position that you started with. So basically, if you want to go from one space to another, if we want to convert from the camera's perspective to the light's perspective, we can basically take the 2.5-dimensional position it from the camera's perspective, unproject it to get the 3D position, and then take that 3D position and project it again from the light's perspective to get the two and a half dimensional coordinate in the light space. After taking some Khan Academy courses on matrices and projections and slowly but surely putting it in the coding work, finally I arrived at a single matrix that could perform all the translations, rotations, scalings, projections, and unprojections in order to transfer from camera space to light space. There was just one problem. It didn't work on the GPU. No matter what I tried with transposing matrices, offsetting coordinates, and tweaking the shader, I just couldn't seem to transform the coordinates. I was pretty bummed because it had already taken me a one old precious week to get this far and it seemed like there was no way forward. But then I decided to hell with the GPU and tried to transform the coordinates on the CPU. And almost immediately I came up with this. With the dynamic shadows almost working, it was the greatest of reliefs. I'm confident in my skills of optimizing code, and thus I wasn't worried about the poor frame rate. I found that all I needed to do was subtract the camera's base depth from the light's base depth in order to get the dynamic shadows working nicely. This was the ultimate good feeling. It was finally working! And all I had to do was clean up the little issues, get the frame rate back up to 60, and check all the code in. I found a little mistake I was making in rendering semi-transparent entities like flames to the light depth buffer, and correcting this made things look a lot better. Then I used hue shifting to deepen the colors of the shadows for even more visual improvement. Then I used a slight softening effect on the edges of the shadows to improve the looks even more. Finally, I discovered some major inefficiencies in the model cacher related to which voxels could be occluded. This meant rendering about 50% less voxels which led to the game once again running at 60 frames a second, even with the shadow map being calculated on the CPU. One final optimization I plan to make is to calculate the shadow map in a separate thread. This ought to keep the frame rate locked at 60 instead of occasionally dipping to 55 or so. So that's the story of how I implemented dynamic shadows in my custom voxel engine for the game Wraithbinder. Thanks for watching, person. That's all for now.